That's it, all finished packing for the shut. Got balls, got my Tesco bag, brolly, shoes, the only club I can actually find the middle of. Really, just time for a quick snack and then I'm on my way. five there well they told me that uh, they don't tell you in the visitors stall is that Stonehenge was actually built as part of a golf course it was a uh, the 18th hole of a giant pitching putt along the south, southwest of England so there you go we're, gonna, we're, we're summoning the spirits of the ancients now as we go past for the, the battle ahead Myself, I've been a member here for on and off 50 years. Uh, started by uh, sneaking on at the 13th uh, hole uh, when I was a lad at Appledore with uh, mates and then joined about three or four years uh, later. The club is the uh, oldest club in England, you know, on its original site uh, and you can see there's a timber framed clubhouse so that has been here nearly as long as the uh, club. Uh, yeah, 1864. Four. Yeah. yeah, so we had our 150th, it would have been here yeah, about five years ago. Uh, so I think, uh, and again, there's, there's some argument, which is the old, but this is the, the oldest on its original site. Uh, the course is on uh, common land, uh, so hence you've got uh, sheep, horses on it. Uh, we have got loose tape to try and keep the animals uh, off the greens. Short hole is the uh, fifth, uh, which uh, often is, is always had bunkers at the front of the green. They have been uh, the they were originally kind of uh, timber faced, but now there's about three or four like pop bunkers in front of uh, in front of the green. We've had, uh, well, the West of England amateur stroke plays uh, played here. The uh, last professional competition uh, was the uh, Martini International. Uh, yeah, probably getting on 40, 40 years ago. Welcome, friends, walkers, and golf perverts from all around the world to the shut. The Royal and Ancient Company of Dishonourable Golf was fourth and final major of the year being held 
across two courses this year, 36 holes between Royal North Devon for round one and Saunton's East course for round two. Let's take a quick look at the field. 22 Warriors braving not only the elements but the global pandemic to make their way down to the Devonshire coast here to take on the shot. And off we go. The first man to tee off. How fitting his grace, El Presidente Crawford. Join with Jack, Sean and Stuart. All of these opening tee shots in the relative calm sunshine. We'll wait for the final one. The most joyous of all tee shots. And this one's for you work day. Skanky. Now let's take a look at some of the action from day one by the method of jangly musical montage. Take it away montage. <laughs> So that was the first day of the shot and as the afternoon wore on the sun began to set and we found ourselves halfway there to crowning the champion golfer of the year. So let's take a quick look at the leaderboards as it stood at the halfway point. Ben Lovejoy with a two shot lead, gentle Ben at the top of that leaderboard at minus three, John and Matt at minus one and if we scroll all the way down there's Russ at plus 19. A disappointing run from David Easton as well, second last, but uh, maybe forgiven based on the one hour of sleep that he had. But here we go, round number two. Saunton's East Course leading us off again, once again, it's Crawford Anderson Dillon at plus nine, probably out of it, alongside the head cover maestro himself, Mr. Matt McDonald. They were out there early testing the conditions, the wind, the sun, the rain, a little bit of everything at Saunton East on this particular day. And as you can just hear by the background of the noise being picked up by our high-tech cameras out there, the wind was certainly blowing, as they say in Scotland, an absolute hooli throughout 
that would surely go a long way in deciding who would be crowned the champion golfer of the year. Those guys at the top of the leaderboard more or less protecting those shots that they had. Uh, knowing it was very unlikely that we would get some sort of charge from the back. Certainly not when the course and weather were wreaking havoc like they did. Big Dave, eighth hole Santa. Thanks for that, Russ. That's David Easton, the mild-mannered but well-travelled Scotsman, trying to uh, make a mark in his first shut event, his debut at the shut. Eight hours and 30 minutes away from his homestead in a car alone. That will drive a man to insanity. Speaking of insane, it's Clement Christiansen finding what looks to be like some sort of short grass off the tee. Jack Michaels, who had a fantastic run in the first round, he found himself three under par through four holes. It looked like scaring the mega bonus for a little while, but uh, as they all do, he got to the 13th tee and he crumbled like a soggy biscuit. Speaking of soggy biscuits, <laughs> uh, it's not even worth completing that thought, is it? On the 8th hole, par 4, 357 yards, Phil Reeks fresh off at this time, an incredible tour of Scotland playing proper links golf and what one can only imagine was a, a real bit of training for the shot itself. On the 10th, 309 yard par 4 here, it's that um, well seen, well known and uh, much revered swing of El Presidente Crawford. And also at the 10th, Phil Reeks with that very high, very angled swing, a lot of power behind that as he looks on, by the looks of things, disappointedly. I know that look, I get it a lot. And here's the man himself, uh, the director of dreams. Gav Irons, with um, a much easier directing style than a swinging style by the looks of it. Nick Smith, 14 over, again these guys uh, they must know that they're out of it, they're playing for pride, they're playing for fun and they're playing for brotherhood at this point. Same here with uh, Stu McLeod. Interesting technique there with the uh, one hand off the driver as soon as contact is made. Uh, I believe that helps him turn through the swing. And speaking of turning through the swing, it is the driver beasting David Easton once again. Showing that he's not all about power. He's got a little bit of a feathery touch as well. Heartbreak kid, Jack Michaels here. Looking to find the short surface on the 14th. And as we're zooming in here, I'm guessing... It's a good one, and that little bubbly squat tells me that he's got close to making a one. Tom Shan, very well queller coordinated with the yellow hat rim and yellow sleeves as well. Uh, I appreciate that. The 17th, one of the most picturesque holes on the course. Speaking of picturesque, it's John Arshad. I'm frightened to say anything bad about him because uh, I fear disappointing him, uh, much like my father. And it looks like a good knock from the... Uh, master of the spreadsheet. Sean Martin, looking very classy with the uh, Chino's black jumper and white polo shirt combo, and Chris Madison at plus seven with some funky, funky golf shoes. <laughs> A funky ass swing as well. Chris Rogerson, who accidentally left and re-entered the golf course many times throughout this competition. Get, get, get. And he likes that. And look at that cheeky little smile, hey? How good was that, that shot? Cheeky little smile. And how good was that shot indeed? Picking up the live mics of the players there. The mics are hot, so we do apologise if you pick up any untoward language or indeed American accents. Very nice touch there from Sean Martin as he drizzles that one like some piri piri sauce in towards the uh, chicken slash hole. Look at the wind blowing there, that's got to affect not only the uh, long shots, not only the drives and the irons, but uh, 
those putts as well. Uh, it can really get into your head when you're thinking of the weight of those putts when there's a big old hoolie of a draft in your face. As John taps in. That putt might have missed. We cut away a little bit quick there. Might have missed. Good swing. Solid contact. And John again. Eight over. So uh, still lurking about a top ten position. John, uh, incidentally, was hotly, hotly backed in the official RACDG tote uh, with a multitude of backers, meaning that the, the winning prize, if he did win, would be about four pence each. Um, came into it with a lot of form, but... Uh, was unable to carry on through. But he's got to take this good form uh, and this good day at Sonten East right into the, the Mackenzie in April. But here he is, we've not seen much of him, but the leaders are off. Gentle Ben Lovejoy started the date three under par. He's back to level par, but that by no fun. means is a failure in this weather and these conditions on this golf course. Chris is third. Needs a good chip onto the green to keep the pressure on. Ben. Thanks for that. American man. What he said. Using the uh, back slope there to drill the ball back towards the hole, and it's just not doing that despite one guy waving his hands animatedly. So, Rogerson again, fourth shot here. Good again, speed. dribbling towards the hole. It's a turn. It is good speed. And it looks like four feet. he'll. Excuse me, who's getting paid to do this, American man? Arshad, with a long-range effort, gives it a sniff of the hole. And here's Rogerson now to tidy up after two chips towards this green. Hoping it's not going to require two putts. And it doesn't. Well hold. Keeps the pressure on Ben Lovejoy, and here is Ben Lovejoy. Again, at even par, holding on to that two-shot lead, but really anything can happen on this particular golf course as he makes his way up the 18th. And the arm is up, the arm is wide, and that is four right. Ben coming up the last hole at even par, knowing, we're just hearing, knowing that he needs a six, a double bogey six to win the shot for the year. The troops are out looking for his golf ball here. And it looks like we've found it. It's going to be an unplayable drop at this point as well. We can see Chris Rogers in there who's been putting the pressure on uh, complaining that nobody was looking for his golf balls. Uh, wondering if there's a little bit of favouritism towards Ben Lovejoy. Certainly for me, who stood to win £37 if he did win. I'm quite happy with that. As Ben hikes it out, he has taken an unplayable, unfortunately, so that's his fourth shot. So all of a sudden, that double bogey six goes from a formality to a brutality. He's off the front of the green here, he's got about 30 yards to go. And uh, he needs to get this up and down uh, in order to win the shot outright. It all comes down to this. And that is... Very tentative. There is indeed a lot of cheese left in that pasta. There is a lot of steak left in that bake. And there's a lot of sausage left in that roll. So here it is. It all comes down to this. The putt for the shot. It's a good roll. Tracking, tracking. And it just slides by and there are half middle-aged men squats all over the green. So Ben taps that one in, and indeed we do have a playoff. Let's look at the final leaderboard. Uh, ben finishes at plus two after a plus five round today, alongside Chris Rogerson. Nobody else anywhere close, and Jesus Christ, Russ Parker, plus 36. So to the playoff hole we go. A little bit of controversy here because uh, Ben's played the worst. Chris hasn't. Chris has just found out what's going on. Short par four. All the way down. Up into that corner. Ben Lovejoy, first tee, Sonten East, playoff hole. Sudden death for the shot. Striped. 
heading down the left hand side and just finds itself in the rough and I see just it's almost hit our cameraman out there not a shout of four scummy action uh, I would also keep an eye on how close he was to the uh, tee box itself there not saying anything but he's down the left hand side he's in play Chris Rogerson knows exactly what he has to do and that's not what he had to do looks like it's hung on though Hung on down that right hand side. Both men are in play. Both are at different sides of the fairway. We call that the Crawford 1 2. Different sides of the fairway. How are you feeling, Chris? Where'd your first one go? No idea. I thought it felt pretty good, but the sun got my eyes. We've got the mega light here, so it's, uh, it's a bit off putting, to be honest, guys. With very different views of the green. Only one of them can be crowned the champion golfer of the year. on the course there filling us in with all the details as Chris winds up for his second shot he's looking to find that green it. it's tough Ben isn't it it's an awful lot of fast swing for him I'm honest an awful <laughs> lot of fast swing I Ben loved his second shot he knows Chris has missed the green anything on the putting surface here would surely hand it to him at this point but that is not on the putting surface that is a long it's way from right. the putting surface both men well. in a whole heap no. of shit. Scenes here on the first player foul. You can understand this. Both you can totally understand this. The nerves both of the situation, of the occasion, the right. getting to both of these players here. Ben Lovejoy, I spoke to him earlier, and he described himself as a mental midget. And um, this playoff is not the place for any type of mental midgetry. Chris Rogerson with a chance to find the green here with his third shot. Here. Looks a little bit chunky, he doesn't like it, he stepped away, the club's been slammed a little bit, quite petulant, but he's not a fan of that. Ben's kept an eye on that and he's decided he's going to be taking himself an unplayable drop, the second unplayable drop in two holes, would you believe? And even with that drop, it is not an easy shot. He's on the pathway, the green is blind to him as he hoiks it up. A little bit to the left, I think, and a little bit long, I also think he's hopping his way up there to try and ascertain where his balls ended up. But still, after seven golf shots between the two of them, we have nothing anywhere near a green. So what's happened? Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's the ball. Chris is very much RIP as he drops on an adjacent tee. And this has got to be it. This is last chance saloon. This is last orders, this is final call. This has to either go in or get close, or Ben Lovejoy will be getting his greasy mitts on the shot. Hand off it very quickly. Shot. It's a little bit short, the line oh, looked good to be honest, that was a there. fairly decent Gallery's effort drowning. as the gallery builds and deepens. Ben Lovejoy now, he knows what to do. He's played three or four or something. I don't even know, he's just got to knock this putt up close tidy things up. It's his fifth shot. Thank you graphics man. Coaxes that one up towards the hole. It's a little bit tentative once again. He did that in regular play on the 18th and he'll do it again on the first hole. Look at the smile. But he's got a smile on his face because he knows his opponent has played far too many shots at this point. So Ben marks his ball and waits for the first action of Rogerson here uh, as Matt Wave has passed out on the green um, as we can see. Is he going to check that he's okay? Is he going to check? No, we just walked straight past him. It's been a long day for uh, Wabanez as he uh, lounges comfortably on the middle of the putting surface. Rogerson knows this has to go. It's all or nothing here. Balls out the bathwater, dick out the trousers, slap it on the table. This has to drop. Off it goes. 
He knows early that it's not in. He doesn't even bother walking towards his ball. The um, COVID friendly lack of handshake, fist bump, tiny little shoulder touch thing there signals the end of the shut. Brilliant. And the champion golfer of the year after a playoff, after 36 grueling holes, is Mr. Ben Lovejoy. We do apply to Thank you very much. A stick award. Thank you. You can put that place to you, please. It's like you've got to put the people so don't put the model on you. Yeah. And then third place, we've got the prizes for a second and third. So third place is John Ash. Yeah, John. Arshad. Thank you. Just missed out in the uh, oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. democracy so we're going to vote for this um, but the way it's going to happen is that uh, I'm going to nominate someone and then we're going to see if you want to vote for that person and if you're happy to vote for them then, then that person becomes the captain. So the person I nominated is my vice captain Bradley. So can we have a show of hands please everybody you'll be happy for Bradley to become the captain next year. That seems pretty unanimous so Bradley you'll become the captain. <laughs> Of us, maybe seven of us on the first first sort of trip. Yeah, so I feel like right, I like can nominate Matt. Would like to my vice captain next year? Everybody hands up. Oh, yeah, Everybody hands up. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, thanks, guys.